do you know God for yourself? This is a question that a lot of people have taken on two extreme ends. So there's the first set of people who believe that because God is calling us into personal intimacy with him um, and wants us to study our Bibles, to get to know him, spend time in prayer, spend time speaking to him, there's no need to go to church. Like you can just do that by yourself. You can read your Bible by yourself, pray by yourself. The Holy Spirit is in you to teach you all things anyways, right? Um, and then they completely neglect church. And then there's the other end, um, who, who don't do any personal study, who completely depend on their pastors for growth. Um, and, you know, when you're trying to maybe like have a conversation or, you know, what does the word of God say? They're like, oh yeah, but my pastor said, but then, you know, they don't have any root in Christ in the sense that there's no personal study. There's no personal relationship. It's just more of an activity for them. Um, so I'm going to be playing the video for you to see. And then when we come back, we're going to discuss, um, you know, um, in detail <clears throat> what we can do about these two extreme ends. Be careful. I don't, it's all these pastors, all these greedy pastors, you know, don't worry. There's a multiplication coming. If you give this one, this will happen to you. So those who cannot give that, God will not favor them. When did miracle become for say? They will now, now begin to say the miracle also on, on says, put it on says, on discount. Do not be mad, you are 32. Go! It is this with your husband right now. Key in, key in, key in. You will key in, you key out, key in, key in. This, this is the fifth year. What has happened? So if you come out abusing men of God, I don't blame you. They are the ones that put themselves in that kind of thing. Telling you what does not work. If your heart is right, when somebody is talking, your heart will bear you witness. Why is that a lot of people don't go to church anymore? Because pastors promised them things that didn't come to pass. If you can tell me, according to Mark chapter so so so, Ephesians chapter so so so, that God has fed you, then I can agree with you. But you said that pastor said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Not those who are led by a pastor. Pastor himself needs to be led. Yes, I hope you had a good laugh because I did. I just found his approach very funny. I feel like he has a very fun personality. I came across it on TikTok and I was just laughing. But he said the truth, right? Um, and I just want us to just delve into it a little. Um, you know, I'm not going to be going to like extreme detail because I want to keep the video short. But we're going to address like probably two things because he said a lot of things in that short um, frame of time. The first thing is that, you know, like I said in the beginning of the video, it's very important that we have a personal relationship with God and we go to the word of God for everything that we need. Right. However, that does not automatically mean that you don't need spiritual leadership. It's very important, right? Um, and I'll give examples from the Bible. So let's look at the life of Paul. Paul was constantly addressing the church, right? He would write letters to them and correct their behavior. Their behavior. There was a time when, you know, somebody, you know, in the church um, was sleeping with his stepmother or so. And Paul told them, put this person away. Don't you know that a little yeast would leaving up the whole door? Pretty much saying that, you know, evil communication corrupts good manners. You can't expect that there'll be somebody in your midst that's doing such and you know you think that you're immune to it no eventually everybody will think oh it's okay and they'll continue to you know um sin without having any repercussion or without feeling convicted by it so he said put this person away so that it doesn't influence the other people and they don't believe they don't start to believe that this is the acceptable way of life right he also addressed other things like greed you know giving so there is a need for spiritual leadership you know like Jesus, when Jesus was leaving, he made disciples, I mean, sorry, he imparted his disciples with knowledge and then told them, go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations. So he, when I say the disciples, I mean the apostles, so the apostles, so the 12, um, he imparted them with knowledge and said, go into the world and make disciples of nations, meaning that what I have taught you, go ahead and teach other people. So there is need for guidance. However, that being said, the problem is that some Christians now take it to the extreme where they don't have any kind of accountability for their spiritual growth in the sense that you take every single thing that you hear from, you know, your pastor, maybe somebody that's held in high regard, and you don't even check what the Bible is saying regarding it. Now, so now am I saying that um, every pastor out there is trying to you know, lead people astray. Of course not. We have amazing men of God who have done great for the kingdom and who have, you know, won a lot of souls and who are doing which have great and powerful ministries of impact around the world. However, what I'm saying is that it is very important that you don't 
subtly start to place your, your pastor above God. And how do I mean that, right? Um, it's very easy for human beings to just get indoctrinated into like some kind of culture or a way of doing things where, you know, the man of God slowly becomes the idol of worship, right? Um, and I say this, you know, not meaning to bash anybody or anything. I'm just being honest, especially from the place where we come from, from Nigeria, Africa, you know, we've seen people do appalling, despicable things, right? You hear people, oh, the man of God said that she eats grass and they go ahead and eat grass. You see people like being, even like in the name of wanting to perform um, miracles or something, you are kicking the person, rolling the person on the floor, slapping the person. I've seen all sorts of video, right? There was even a man of God molesting somebody in the church all in the name of wanting to deliver, deliver the person from a demon, right? And the reason they are able to thrive and they're able to actually amass a great, you know, like if you see their church, they have like a good number of congregation. It's because these people have refused to sit down and study the word of God and say, okay, what does God, the word, the word of God say about deliverance, for instance? What does God, God's word say that I should eat grass, you know, to be delivered of something? What does God's word say that I should, the man of God should touch my breasts? Because I've seen a video like that, you know, sorry, I'm sorry that it's a little graphic and all that. What does, what does the word of God say about deliverance? You know, when we go into the scripture, we can see that the Bible says when a man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away and all things become new. So deliverance is through Christ. When you receive the life of Christ, that is when you receive a new nature. And in that nature, there is deliverance. So all the things that you were struggling with, struggling with before, it's not like it's going to stop automatically because there are patterns, there are habits that have been built over time. There might be generational patterns, which we call generational curses in your family. But now that you are in Christ, you have the authority to stand on the word of God to come against them and to refuse to let it continue in your life. So going to the word of God and seeing what the word says helps you to be able to know God for yourself so that when you are taught, you can be like a Berean Christian. So the Berean people are people who would uh, you know go home and study and be like oh this is what i was taught in church what does the bible have to say about that because that way you are ensuring that you are guarding your heart you are guarding your hearts you are guarding your mind so you're not susceptible the bible says that you know that some of us you know are pretty much like the wave we are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and some of us anywhere belief is where is my miracle you know we're just going to be there you don't care where the source of the power is, you don't care what is being taught, you don't care what, and you don't care what they're saying. You just want a miracle, and you get so desperate that you find yourself in a very compromising manner. You know, for some people, they tie miracles to um, prosperity, the prosperity gospel, where you hear people saying, "Oh, if you pay this much tithe, or if you sow this much seed, or if you vow this much, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will this and that." And they're calling, "Oh, a thousand dollars, three hundred. And I'm just like, why? You know, the Bible does encourage us to give. It says God's lo God loves a cheerful giver. As a matter of fact, in the New Testament, like I shared in one of my tithing videos, um, if you want, I can, you know, just put the link. In fact, I'll add the link down below for you to see. Um, it, they, they sold everything that they had, right? So they were always giving, but they gave in response to the love of God. It was never a thing of, oh, I'm giving to God so that he can bless me or so that I can get that miracle. No, God, God, God is not a, he's not a um, magician or a babalawo where it's like, okay, give me this much money and I'll do this. No, that's not how he, um, that's not, how, that's not how it works. Right. And that's the reason why you see lots of people saying, I'm not going to the church anymore. That's the second part I wanted to talk about because they never really knew Christ for themselves. So you jump from one church to the other, you jump from one miracle center to the other. And when you're not getting that thing that you're looking for, because you're going about it the wrong way, you now say, well, the church is bad, you know, and then you start hearing videos about people saying, oh, you know, they, they I was manipulated in the church and they took all my money. I, 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 I really sympathize with you, my sister and brother, but if you had taken the time out to study your Bible and study, study scriptures, you wouldn't have fallen for such. 
Do you know what I mean? So again, this is not to bash anybody, but this is to call you to a place of responsibility so you can go into the scripture and see what God says regarding you. When you get to the point where the word of God is, 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 is a daily bread, where you go to the word for everything you need, you realize that you become you become very sensitive. There's some things, there's some pastors I can't listen to. And I say that with all respect, not in a, in a rude way, just because you can, you, when you read the word of God, you know that this is what God says. And when you're hearing anything different, it's almost very, like, it's very like, um, I don't know. It's like your spirit cannot just stand when you're hearing anything but the truth of God. So if you, if you, if someone comes to me and says, oh, you know, pay me this much money so that God can give you this blessed to know God can give you this much money. I'm going to say, no, that's not what the word of God said. What does the word of God say regarding, um, you know, my finances? It says that what? It says that all my needs are met in Christ. And I'll read the scripture. It says that for God will supply what all your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. It says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as you're so prosperous. So God wants us to prosper. He says that I will lend to many nations. I will not borrow. He says, whatever I lay my hands on will prosper. I'm not just saying that we should go ahead and make these declarations without giving. Like I said, God loves a cheerful giver, right? But I'm saying the motive behind your giving should never be because there is something that you want to receive. No, then you become somebody like, then then why, then how does, how, how, how do you differentiate God from man? If you're saying that God will give me this because I, I give him this or I paid him this, you know, God is not a magician, right? Um, I just pray that God will give us the wisdom. Uh, I pray that we receive wisdom in, in, in navigating, like, you know, and protecting our hearts, in navigating what, what God expects of us in terms of, like, intimacy, where we study the word of God. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So when you get to the point where you can divide the word of truth rightly, you will not be led astray. You will not be jumping from church to church. You will find a Bible-believing church. You would find a man of God that teaches the truth. And even at that, you will constantly be checking to make sure that everything you're taught is in the word of God. Because again, you should never, ever, ever place a man of God above God. No. Yes, they've been called to be our spiritual leaders um, and they've been called to, you know, be the head over a flock. However, that does ne- that should never replace your personal relationship with God. So for everybody out there that's saying, I've led the church because, oh, I was manipulated. I apologize. And I hope that you, you know, take your time out to find a Bible-believing church that you can sit and grow in. Because, again, it's very important to never forsake the fellowship of the brethren. That's something that God commands. And, you know, I just pray that God helps us as a body. Because every day, it just feels like there's so much controversy out there. So, again, stick to God's word so that you are not just, you know, toe and fro like every you know like like the wind um and you're not just thrown around with every kind of doctrine and know that god is for you god is with you know that the spirit of god is inside you and through the appropriate guidance from a good leader you are able to learn what the word of god says regarding your life and times where you don't understand you can go and ask for guidance again from somebody who is you know teaching the truth and how do you know the truth the truth is in god's word i feel like i've rambled a lot but Um, I'm going to stop here. So I'll see you on the next episode. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Um, Make sure you share this video because like I said, you know, it's very important as Christian content creator to put out content because the other side, they're doing amazing and it's always viral. So make sure this video goes viral. Share it to somebody there who has given up on the church because God has not given up on them. It's very important that they themselves do not give up because there are still good churches out there. And most most importantly, God is calling you into a personal and intimate relationship with him. Have a good day and see you on the next episode. Bye.